Well, welcome back to Ye Old Foundry. Uh, this is uh, part two of maybe three parts of making the uh, uh, casting that's going to hold the uh, you know garbage plastic garbage bags that I'm going to use in the uh, in my kitchen. Okay, now <clears throat> behind me I got everything uh, set up for ramming up and. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing is instead of having it on the tripod, I mean the camera on the tripod, I'm going to put it on my head, uh, you know, the, the strap on the head that the camera can go on so that you can be looking at it just as I look at it, okay? So, let me go ahead and uh, turn this off. I'll uh, switch it over to the head band and then we'll get some stuff done okay okay ladies and gentlemen we're gonna start ramming up all right first thing you got to do is uh, this stuff is in the way or not no no that stuff probably was <sighs> captured by the paint when I was doing it <sighs> anyway so first thing you got to do is you got to put some a dust a dusting of parting powder on this this the, the um, sand that I have inside here is naturally sticky and that's why the way you want it because you want all the grains of sand to stick to each other and after you get done ramming it up that it'll stay in that position, okay? But you don't want it to stick to this because once you pull this out, if it's stuck to it, it'll tear up the mold cavity and, uh, you know, you'll have to do so much more work to try and keep it from messing up or, uh, to you know, to do more work to take the uh, defects off the casting. So, just give it a dust. You don't have to put five pounds on there. All you got to do is put enough to be a barrier in between. Okay, you use this riddle, and it's good to have a, a small, small, uh, you know, something small for the sand to go through. Because if you use your sand a lot, you're likely to have some uh, excess metal in it from when you were ramming it up. All right, so just riddle it into it. Now there's one another way of riddling. If you don't want to get your hands dirty, you can just go side by side like that. Okay. Now before you put anything in there like these like these uh, clumps, this facing sand needs to be put. I mean, you know, uh, tapped into place. So what we do is the very first time you, you start ramming it, you do it with your fingers so that the sand will not move when you're using something bigger or more powerful like the pneumatic rammer. You don't want all this sand to move around while you're ramming it up the other way. And I need to get some in here between the cast, or rather the uh, mold, the pattern, and the side of the flask. Because this is, see, you if you can see it, let me go around here so that you can see it. You see in here, this gap, that's less than I that less than optimal. I don't like that being so small, okay? Because you can't really ram it up per usual. So what I have to do is I have to find something that's small enough like this. This is small enough to get in there and ram it in. We have to do that separate from the rest of it just to make sure it's solid okay 
I can get enough in there. And I'm not gonna use the, the, the riddle each and every time that I'm putting sand in because that would be a waste of time. All you need to do is get the sand small enough, fine enough, that you'll cover all the pieces of the pattern. The rest of the time, your rammer will take this stuff that's in the riddle and make it conform to the pattern. All right. Now what I gotta do also is be very careful about this part right here because I don't wanna hit it with the rammer and uh, split it or break it. Okay, spread it out. Now I'm gonna be making some noise, just a little bit. Okay, doing better, doing good, doing good. Now I did have to put this through the muller, uh, the first layer of this into a muller and, and redistribute the uh, Oh yeah, okay, anyway. Redistribute the moisture in there because it, as it was sitting for all these months, it uh, dried out. But the Muller did an excellent job. Okay, now, one thing you may have, if you've been paying attention, may have noticed. All right, where is it? Oh, there, sitting on its side. The first time I did the ram up, I didn't use this. You got to, you got to keep it from the first layer that you're ramming to. You got to keep that from being a separate, uh, you know, uh, dis dis discreet a bit of molding uh, from the the up the the ones that are coming in right uh, next because uh, if you do anything the wrong way I've got this acting as a frame I've got this underneath to keep it good and but so I don't expect it's ever gonna fall apart but if you start using uh, other types of molding flasks you're gonna be taking a chance with the uh, the sand falling out because it won't be you know attached to the stuff above it well from this orientation it's above it when I turn this over it'll be the bottom because this is the drag that I'm ramming up right now. Now I should have enough to not hit that spine, that thin part. As you can see, 
it's going to have several layers to it. That's why we got to scratch each layer so that it'll uh, bond with each layer will bond with the other and not possibly fall out. Now, how do you know if your your sand is too dry or not, uh, or or not ready to be used? Take a handful, squeeze it, and if it conforms to your shape shape of your fingers, and just breaks apart easily like that, it's a good molding sand. One good thing about a muller is that any of this that's left over in here, you can uh, just put it in dry. Let me see, where is that stupid thing? There it is. You can put it in, if it's dried out, into the muller and then just have it mull with your next uh, batch of sand. But if I can get this in to the flask fast enough, it won't dry out to the point where I can't use it to, to uh, ram it up. I think I need to have a, just a bit more on top. Okay, now a key to this uh, ramming up the drag is that once you get it all rammed up, you gotta strike it off so that this is uh, the same surface as the sand here. If you weren't, if I was to just take and turn this over like it is right now, the pressure exerted on the mold will be in these high spots and it'll tear up the mold. Now, you get yourself a piece of angle iron, you put it down just like that, not like this, not necessarily like that, you can do it, but if you do it like this, it'll act as a plow and it'll cut the sand nice and flat. See how that is? All right, the next thing is you've got to you got to use your, well, whatever sharp piece of, uh, you know, like this one I use a scribe. You got to vent it, okay? You put holes in here. Once you pour the molten metal, it'll have the, the uh, steam that's generated by the molten metal will have a place to go. Now that, uh, you know, if you don't do this, it doesn't mean the steam is, isn't going to escape and always blow up your metal because there's a certain amount of, of um, gap in between all the grain sands 
it's, it's known as permeability. The gap in between the grain sands allows a certain amount of ap atmosphere to uh, escape, a certain amount of steam to escape. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's, if you do this, you'll be assured that your steam won't stay inside the mold cavity. You don't want any of the steam inside of the mold cavity as you're pouring it because it'll uh, give you some casting defects. All right, now I need to flip this over. There's a lot of the guys out there that do molding. They use only a flat plate or flat uh, piece of wood or plate, you know, because sometimes you have uh, aluminum plates um, that you can put on there. This is supposed to support the sand as you're f you're turning it over. All right. Uh, now I've already shown everybody how the how you can uh, have the uh, three you know three uh, clamps to so that you don't have a chance of this slipping or this slipping or any of this down here slipping uh, while you're trying to flip it over. So. And there's my clamps right there if I wanted to do it. But I usually don't have to do that because I've, I've flipped these molds, um, you know, a dozen times, all right? What you do, you pick it up, you come out here, you get the edge of this under here, then you just roll it, okay? If you're uh, not strong enough to take this whole mass, and turn it, you know, like some of the small fellas I know and some of the uh, ladies I know. This, is, you know. this isn't light. This is not, this is probably a good 30 pounds or better. And if you can't handle uh, maneuvering this, uh, this amount of mass, uh, you know, things might fall apart on you and, and you've got to start all over again. Okay, so, me, I'm getting old. I don't know, it's been a while since I've done this. But I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to do it. Let's see. Yeah. No, I don't think I will. I don't want to waste my time. So I'm going to show you, if you've not seen it before, the three clamp method of turning these over. Do I have plenty of room? Yes, I do. All right, you just, you put a clamp on one side and you just give it a little tiny bit of, of twist so it won't move. You put another on the other side. Do the same thing, but now you can give give it a little more pressure, okay? Here's the, re, uh, you know, here's the uh, advantage of this. All you gotta do is turn it sideways. And then you get this, because I am on a ram up board. You put this on this side and anchor it. Take this one off, go to the other side and anchor it and take this one here off because you don't need it anymore. Then you just turn this over and now it's flipped. Okay, that's why they invented that technique because, I mean, nobody wants to have to do the job all over again just because everything moved on you while you were flipping it. Okay, I can take this off.
and then I put the cope in place. Okay, now, well, I've already got that marked over there of where I want my uh, sprue to be cut. So, make a mark. We usually use the grease pencils just to make it, where is this? Okay, so I got my marks. This is uh, considerably easier, this part, because you don't have to worry about, worry too much about uh, hitting the pattern. I'm just gonna put a little bit of facing sand down first so that uh, that face of the, the mold the pad, you know, the mold in here, uh, you know, will uh, be smooth. If it's smooth, this face of it is smooth, then that part of the uh, casting that was formed by this face uh, will be smooth too. Spread it out, at least some. Need more. Don't quite have enough. But I, I do want, I, I, you know, every time the very first layer of sand I put down, I want to ram the stuff in place with my fingers so that things don't move around when I'm using the muller, or rather the uh, rammer. All right, in there like that. Get a couple, couple of scoops and put it in there and the rammer will be used to make the first layer of this sand. Now you wouldn't think that I'd be using up all this sand, but I, I you know, and I don't use all of it up. But uh, we use it quite a bit. Now, our ancestors or predecessors in the foundry uh, trade didn't have pneumatic rammers like that. They had hand rammers. But if you can afford a hand rammer, uh, I'd get it because you were able to have more consistent ramming pressure on your sand. And you can ram up that layer faster. It's a difference between having uh, five and six uh, molds made or ten molds made during the same time frame. see if I can rescue some of this sand that's fallen down in here before it turns dry. 
All right, whatever it is. Yeah, I don't know why the uh, camera was beeping at me because I still have about 35% of my battery life left. Another good advantage of having this new camera. The other one, all it had was an icon that showed how much you had left in there and it really wasn't that kind of thing where it told you. You could, you could All you had to do was just guess at how much time you had left. All right. And if everything goes good in here, I'll be happy. It's a brand new camera, and I am not fully uh, conversed with this camera. All right. Now we're gonna get this off. Now the, this one here, I had it set up in such a way that you can't wiggle it up and down and back and forth when you're taking it out, okay? It's got guides that'll stay right by this, but I still wanna try and uh, give it some good wrapping before I try and lift it. Okay. When you use your wrapping tool, go all the way or 360 degrees. Don't just do this and don't just do this because some of the other dimensions, you might not be clearing it. Now before you lift it up, and this is especially useful when it comes to uh, if you have, uh, you know, lettering in a plaque, you might have knocked the base loose on the lettering by doing this. Now you go. And then you're pushing the green sand back together. All right, let's see how this goes. Didn't go as well as I want. I didn't, I guess I'm gonna have to gonna have it have to give it a little bit more. Uh, 
space on being like in here i put these spacers in here so that all i'd had to do was ram it straight up and i mean lift it straight up and down problem is i didn't have enough space like in here bummer that'd be a lot of work to put this back in maybe i can do it i don't know It's not going to help me much. I'll just have to re-ram it. But now, uh, having done it the first time, I know that I need to have more space for wrapping. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and uh, do this another time. You probably won't see this uh, because... Well, I gotta redo it. I gotta re-ram re -ram everything and all that. Hey, welcome back. Okay, now, when I left, last left you, the uh, drag that I had rammed up didn't come out to my expectations. But I found out the reason why, and it was what I, you know, what I surmised is that when I put those inserts in the uh, ram up board to keep them, you know, when you raise it up and lower it down on the pins, that uh, it was going to, it was, you know, it was going to guide it really good. Problem is with those in there, there was no possibility of being able to wrap the uh, pattern and gain any clearances around the pattern in the sand. Okay, so I re-rammed it, all right? Now what we have, it's down on the floor right now. I just automatically went and uh, put it on the floor. I sure hope that that's still going because I don't have a picture. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this I think you'll see that I also uh, gave it a little bit of spritz when it come to uh, the mold wash now I use the mold wash with oh where is it did I throw it away no I put it back over there I had bought a long time ago a uh, little spray gun which is normally used for detail work on on cars or normally used for uh, painting on models and stuff like that and I was kind of hoping that it would be useful when it comes to the mold uh, wash well it was for about 10 10 seconds and then it got plugged the uh, holes in the in the you know sp sprayer are so micro fine that the you know thing plugged up and the stuff that's uh, you know that the uh, mold wash is made of was uh, too much for it but I was able to get at least some of it done so I'll put you over here and aim you down down to there and I'll take this <clears throat> apart now normally once I put these together I don't I totally dislike taking them back apart again but I neglected to uh, video taking it up 
you know, ramming it up, okay? As you can see, it's not, this is the actual color of the sand, and this is all light colored. Well, that's the mold wash. And using that spray gun did a real good job, while it lasted, of spraying a light mist of that mold wash in there. Now, when I, when it came time to take the uh, pattern out of the sand, I not only used my wrapping tool after I took those, uh, I'll get the pattern right here, after I took the inserts that I had put in, in these, in these, uh, you know, parts here, the guides, I took those, those inserts out and it had just enough room to be able to be wrapped. Okay, it did an excellent job. I not only used my wrapping tool on it, but I also used the pneumatic wrapper. Okay, this is, uh, does an excellent job, especially on tight clearances, which was apparently its problem here. Now I'll, uh, it makes a lot of noise. Okay, and let's see if, uh, yes, I still have, I still have air in the line here. As you can see, it has a capability of having a bolt like this put through here, okay, and into the wood of the pattern. And that's what I used. And I, uh, after a few, uh, well, not even a minute, but less than a minute of letting this run, watch your ears. It has a very, it, ha it doesn't, doesn't go a big movement okay it's a it's a very short movement but it does a darn good job at loosening everything up all right loosen it up there wasn't a bit of the mold cavity that that was uh stuck it all came out perfectly all right so in the very near future i'll get the uh I'll get the uh, furnace all set up and we'll go ahead and pour these. In the meantime, I'll just put the, uh, I'll put the coat back on the drag and uh, put the cover over the, the sprue, I mean the pouring basin, which is what that is, okay? And, uh, We'll get it poured in the near in, in the very near future. Okay, I'll see you then.